Welcome back, everybody, to your three-man booth. NFL Week 6 with Dan Salenfeld and Bud. We're doing really good on our picks, ATS. Uh, I got two more correct, and Phil and Buddy notched one-on-one weeks, which is overall very good. In the first week of buys, there's a ton of injuries. Uh, one coach already got fired. Phil, Phil starts. Did he get fired? I mean, it, it wasn't oh. performance-based. I'm sorry, he's, he's, he stepped down. <laughs> well, performance-based. Yeah, right. Email scandal. I'll kick things off with week six picks here. I am taking one dominant winner again. I'm riding with the Buffalo Bills. They're giving five and a half at Tennessee. The Titans lost to the Jets. The Titans were underhanded at that extra game, sure. But Buffalo is just tearing people apart. They tore through Kansas City, like really slowed down their offense. I don't know what Tennessee thinks they can pull off to keep it within a touchdown. I'm only giving a five and a half. That's a great game. And then I'm going to take the Houston Texans. They have covered quite a number of times this season. They should have beaten New England last week. They didn't. So they lost by a couple points. Big deal. They're getting nine and a half against the Colts, who should have won, but didn't win. They lost a close game against the Ravens team, which who I'm not impressed with. So they're kind of like the same thing to me. I don't really buy the Colts. We were all picking them to get the top pick a couple weeks ago. So now they win almost. And now we're with them. No, nine and a half. I'm taking the points with. Houston, rolling the dice. Well, right off the bat, I'm going to go against you with the Indianapolis Colts. I will lay the points because, let's put it this way, Lamar Jackson does does not play for the Houston Texans, does he? No. The Colts were winning 22-9 to in that game at one point. The the Colts' defense is much better than I think you think they are because no one can stop Lamar Jackson. That's the second time on Monday Night Football that he's had a come-behind victory. Uh, And the Colts, I mean, the Texans are just crap. You thought you thought uh, Jonathan Taylor had a good game on Monday. He's going to rip rip through that defense. So I'll lay I'll lay the points and give me the ten points. Or you said nine and a half, right? Yep, nine and a half. All right, even better. I'll take the nine and a half. And then the second one, I'm just gonna I'm gonna take Cleveland. Ooh. I don't, I don't think that the great matchup they had against the Chargers is really indicative of how that Cleveland defense is. I think they're a lot better than that. Herbert is just spectacular, as as we were talking before. And Arizona has got some injury. Carla Murray's got a shoulder issue again. So I'll take Cleveland. Minus uh, minus three over here. The crazy thing about that Cleveland game is Cleveland was up big. And uh, Justin Herbert, just I agree. He's just, you know, Miami could have had him, but they got to it instead. And I, <laughs> yeah, we, uh, exactly. we all, that could be Miami's Dan Marino, the Jets' Dan Marino. Uh, I'm going to take uh, the Rams over the Giants. The Giants are a walking, wounded um, dumpster fire of a football team at the moment. The only thing they can do is uh, throw a punch as well. I respect that punch, though. I respect it. That's fair enough, Phil. Uh, but you can't respect the product on the field, I'll tell you that much. Um, so lay, lay however many points. What is it, Dan? Ten points? Ten and a half. Okay, right now they don't know if Daniel Jones is going to play. So that if Daniel Jones plays, I'm sure that number is probably going to go to probably, what do you think, seven? It might drop a few I don't know. points. Yeah, yeah Barkley's I mean, out, Galladay's out. I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, even, but you're getting Shepard back and you're getting Slayton back, and now Kadarius Tony's playing. So, it, yeah, I, if if Daniel Jones plays, it'll drop a couple points. That's but it. their defense is not going to be able to hold the Rams' offense that has just been spectacular to this point. So, even if it's seven, let's say I'm just going to lay whatever the point number is and uh, take the Rams. And then I'm going to take Kansas City on a bounce back game against the Washington team whose defense is bottom five in the league. I think we all agree that we all pick Buffalo to represent the AFC. Um, at least I, I, I know I pick Buffalo and I think we, I think we know why I think Buffalo is just going to steamroll teams. And I think they figured out how to play Patrick Mahomes, but I don't think Washington's defense is that good. So I'm going to, I think the point spread is seven on that. Leave the seven points. So I'm going to take Kansas City and lay the points, and Rams lay the points. Excellent picks for Week Six. I want to, I want to piggyback on your Washington hate. I don't think they're a very good football team. The Giants don't look like a good football team with Jones out, especially. So Dallas is kind of running away with the division, right? Or are we buying the Eagles at all? Because they did have a good no. victory last week. No, no, that, that no, the, they did have a good victory, but uh, this is this not is. This is Dallas's division to lose. The, the, the way that Dallas plays on offense is just ridiculous. So the Eagles, I see they might have like three top 10 picks or something crazy right now, if, especially if they're not a great team. Are they going quarterback? I mean, with three first-round picks, they're high up. Yeah, but I don't think I don't think the reason 
they're losing is Jalen Hurts. Oh, yeah, that's good. I mean, I think he's I think he's played well. I mean, I, I don't think that he has many weapons. I mean they don't run the ball. That's the problem. Right. They don't run the ball. I mean, at all. Everything everything goes through him. It's it's very similar to Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson has zero running game right now. Hit the running game is Lamar Jackson. I'm not sure I've seen enough from Hertz to give him the franchise going forward, though. I mean, this is the second season, right? So they kind of have to make a decision. But yeah, but he's he's a second round pick. So I mean you you, you still got him. So how was it waking up at well, I'm sure you're up anyway, but you had football on at six o'clock in the morning on the West Coast. Yeah, my, my kids got me out of bed and I turned, I picked up my phone and started watching in the Yahoo app. Um, it was almost too early. Well, it, it wasn't good football, so I didn't have to really pay that close attention. Um, it no, but it was your team, though. That was the other problem. You had to watch it. Well, no, I mean, I don't. <laughs> not, not, not the Jets. <laughs> I've, I've learned over the last few years that it's not worth the pain to watch the Jets. I'll, when they start to like look like they're playing like a decent game, I'll Fogel pay attention. But if they're playing like crap and they're just three and outs and letting the offense on the other team like they did with Matt Ryan roll and the, the refs are against them with that stupid pass, roughing the passer call, it's like, oh, this is garbage. Why am I, I going to watch this? I texted you guys both at, at 3 nothing. Yeah, it was three nothing Atlanta, and I told both of you that the game was over. And, and you know, and Phil gives me a whole bunch of crap about, oh, you know, it's only a quarter. We're, the Jets haven't even gotten the ball yet. I mean, listen, I know, how this all, I know how this all plays out. Very beginning of the game, they had him on third down. They sacked the quarterback. He threw a wobbly pass. Fourth down, great punt. Except that the sack got called roughing the passer, and it was like. The cleanest sack I've ever seen. Phil, you and I played football. That was how they taught us to sack the quarterback. So I, I felt like it was over at that point. <laughs> so he, here's here's how I look at it. The Jets, they blew the game against the Patriots, right? Four turnovers will we'll do that. I mean, but that game was somewhat competitive, unrelated to the, what the final score was because the, the Patriots scored a couple touchdowns in garbage time in the fourth, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they beat the Titans. They probably should have beaten the Falcons. I mean, they, they showed up in the first two quarters. Yeah. You know, I inter- may I interject really quick on that? They, of course. Looked, they looked pretty good. Like they were with the Falcons. They were just as bad as Atlanta, but just as just as good in certain moments, right? Except for the very beginning, they suck so bad in the first quarter, they're never going to win anything. Maybe they'll luck into another victory once. That's what you're about to do is roll to the schedule, right? Because it's not pretty. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, looking looking ahead, I mean, they come out of the, the bye and they have the Patriots, right? The Patriots are not impressing me no, at all. I mean, they should have lost this week to Houston, as you said. I, I, I think a lot of people had a survivor. Yeah, and then you got the Bengals. They're a good football team. Yeah, they're with then you have the Colts, and you don't know what the Colts are. Then you got the Bills. I mean, that if I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna lock any pick in, in the course of the year, the Bills the Bills are gonna put up 75 points against the Jets that game. So hold on, do you think the Jets can get one win out of Patriots Bengals? They can be the Patriots, I think. I mean, the Bengals think are the, Patriots. the Bengals are kind of like the Titans. They they play pretty good, but they don't have a lot of wins. I guess I guess my point is is that, but I mean, coming out of the bye, you have one, two. Three, four out of the next five games, you have a possibility of winning. You could beat the Patriots. You could, you may be able to beat the Colts, and then you have the Bills, and that's obviously a loss. And then you have the Dolphins, and then you have the Texans. I mean, I'm, I'm not blown away by those cool. two teams, and I'm not blown about by, by the Patriots. There are I mean, a lot of winnable know, football games there. We just need this team to like look decent. That all you got to have is this team look halfway decent. I mean, just yeah. be competitive, and then after that, you got the Eagles, the Saints. The Eagles aren't that impressive. No, this schedule feels softer now. What, and then you what got week, the, then you got the Jaguars. Game. And because then, I'm going to stake my survivor life on the Jets in that week, taking them against November the November 28th, so it's the Why Sunday. Why would you do that if you made it that far? Why would you possibly do that? <laughs> Put me down for that game. That's If I make it that far, mark my word, I will take the Jets. I don't know why you're doing that. No, I, mean, <laughs> I got to use every team. I got to use all the teams, right? Yeah, but you're about to have at least five good teams left by that point, right? At the beginning of the game, they seem somewhat unprepared. And this team is still making the same penalties over and over and over and over again. I mean, why? Can I ask a question? Denzel Mims has been targeted twice all year. And he's caught both balls. What, what are What are we missing here? Well, they're not throwing to Elijah Moore either. I don't understand. I, like, don't, I don't get it. You don't know. You know what? May I tell you what's going on? I think a little bit. Zach Wilson has three options, right? And you check one, check two, check three. I'm not sure he's quite learned how to check one, check two yet. I think he's 
checking one and not checking two and three. And so, yeah. so I'm not where, where even if Mims is on the field, he's not going to get checked. Moore is not going to get checked because one's Crowder or one is what's his face. Corey Davis. Davis. So, yeah. And, and I think that he's holding on to the football too long because he's waiting for that option to become open. But what he needs to do is just, he's got the arm strength, throw the, ball to, lo- throw the ball to a location and let his receiver go get the football. Oh yeah. You put it where it's supposed to be and the receiver will get there. Right. Like that one, inter- the one interception that he had, he was staring down the receiver the entire way. And he, that ball, he was open. That ball should have been out before the player made his cut. Oh. He waited until the cut was made. And then by then the, the defender already knew where he was going. And he just cut in front of it. Well, I'm going to state the obvious because he is a rookie. These are rookie mistakes. On a stupid Still nothing it. play. Crushed on an absolute it. stupid nothing play. The play was over. That's normally how the injuries happen, right? Oh, but, it was so frustrating. But, it's like, and and I, as soon as that happened, game was over. I mean, the, the, the air just came right out of the blue. Yeah. That. Well, well, thankfully. And then, looks, give Daniel, yeah. and then Daniel Jones gets his head smashed or in, in on, a, on an end around, which – Stupid play call, by the way. Well, well thankfully, it looks like it's only going to be a, a week or maybe two, three weeks from now. Yeah, but I mean, that's that's your standard when you're playing basketball and you roll your ankle. So it's I, I know, and it's never yeah. better until the season's over. I know that too. Like you tape it up, but you're playing through the pain. I, I guess. But, but Phil, yeah. to your to to counteract that, what are what are what is the what is the Giants' option in the running game if there's no Saquon? They they have they have no they have one. right. So you have to run Daniel Jones. So, so I, said it, the, I, I said he it. I said it. He has the capability sequence. of doing it. I said it in that first sequence. It was first and goal. Booker runs right into the line, doesn't do anything. I said he should have just jumped over the goddamn line, which is exactly what he did. The, the play Mike Glennon came in. He got the ball and jumped over the line, scored a touchdown. If he did in the first and goal play, Daniel Jones' head would have fallen off. So we ran through the Jets' schedule and saw a lot of winnable games. The Giants' schedule outside of their division. What's it? Look, what's it looking like? I mean, they got one more really hard game against the Cowboys, obviously. All right, I'm going to give you the next. I'm going to give you the next five games. Okay. Rams loss. Panthers. Ugh. Chiefs. Chiefs loss. Raiders. They can win that one. Yeah. Bucks. That's probably going to be a loss. I mean, this this team could literally be one and nine. Agreed. Yeah. But, like no, to- but they're already one. In, but they're one and four right now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they could they could totally be one and nine. I, well, I th- I think if Barkley gets back, though, they should beat the Raiders because the Raiders are kind of teetering at this point. If they go one and nine, is is Joe Judge getting fired? And I you know hope. that Kansas City game is on Monday Night Football too, with the Manning cast coming back. I really hope that he doesn't get fired, man. You need to give these coaches a little time. <laughs> he hasn't had. Well, I think I think if they go one and nine, I, the one thing's for certain: Dave Gettleman won't be there. Well, yeah, he his track record is pretty poor. I mean, the back half of their schedule, they have a couple games, but then they got to play the Chargers, the Cowboys, the Eagles, the Bears, and and Washington. I mean, this. I mean, the way this team is playing, I mean, they literally could win three games, four games. You'd actually be, you would have actually be going backwards from what you were last year. So this is a difficult question to ask, but do the Jets win more games than the Giants? The schedules are just diverging in opposite directions right now. Thank God for fantasy and sports betting finally legal this week. Because you now have the ability to bet on football from your home, will you be placing our bets? Will Phil be betting eating the book? I, well, that's the plan. All right. All right. <laughs>